Okay, guys, it is way after 1 p.m. here in Crystal Lake, Illinois, but it's time for a live stream, a very special live stream. I don't know if any of this is going to work. Hopefully you guys can hear me. Are you guys hearing me okay? Let me know. But I'm outside. I'm in the backyard, and there's going to be an eclipse later today. I've got some special sunglasses, basically an ND filter, on my uh, big camera, and we're looking up at the sun right now from Crystal Lake in the backyard. It was supposed to rain all day today, but it looks like we've got some good weather. And this is what we're seeing already. It's windy out here, though. And uh, this is what we're seeing so far with the uh, eclipse. So there we go. Uh, yeah, Michael, I said, is this live stream just going to be pointed at the on cloud eclipse? No, this is this is we, this is what we got going on live here today. We also, uh, you know, it's not going to be just a, a live stream. We do have an unboxing that we're going to do today. Uh, I got something from Under Armour, which should be interesting. But um, and I do have uh, the special, the looking at the sun directly sunglasses as well. I think it's weird that they make. Okay, here I am. Uh, let's see. Huh. Did we lose all the cameras? We should have all the cameras still. Uh, all right. So some technical difficulties, but let's see if we can make this work. Uh, okay. Yeah, here we go. Now we're back. Okay. All right. We're going to try this. We will try to do this for as long as we can and uh, see what's going on and uh, try to juggle both of these things happening at the same time. Now, you know, the frustrating thing for me is that, uh, you know, the sun keeps moving. So uh, that's going to make this a little bit harder. And it is windy out here. So like this thing is just shaking all the time. Uh, it's in soft grass, so I don't know how much better I'm going to get than this. Maybe if I just lean on it, it'll make it better, but I don't know. We'll try. Um, you know what was weird, though? When this went out for a second, and well, I'm outside, so the Wi-Fi might be spotty, but when this did go out, um, a whole bunch of, like, sirens started going off, so I was like, what's happening out here? But I don't know. So this is one way you could look at the eclipse. You know what's funny or what's weird is that so... For, at my kid's school, they're letting the um, like third grade and up go outside and they got the special sunglasses for the kids to wear. But if you're younger than third grade, they make you watch it from inside. Uh, and I think they're going to watch it on TV. So, yeah. Um, all right. And Vanessa Martina says, uh, this is so weird. My view of the clips is further covered. More of the sun is obscured. Well, I think it's because you're further south, Vanessa. So I think that's what's going on with that. Uh, but this is wild. <laughs> Terry Prolong says, uh, the Flat Earth Society is freaking out. I feel like every, every society is freaking out, but especially the Flat Earthers, there's got to be freaking out today. I'm going to try to work on this camera angle a little bit, guys. Ooh, there we go. All right. I think that'll be good for a little while, though. 
Yeah, and CB76 says, only the eighth graders in my kids' middle school are allowed to go outside. Oh man, that stinks. Imagine if you're in seventh grade and you're like, oh man, I want to go outside and see it. Um, but it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Like, I mean, I'm not going to look directly up at it because I'm looking at it through here, but I'm looking at it uh, whenever I'm looking up. I'm not looking at the sun. I'm looking at um, this flippy screen over here, but yeah, hopefully uh, battery levels. Guys, I'm not sure if this battery is going to make it the whole time. So I might have to turn uh, the Eclipse cam off for a little bit. Maybe I'll get a little bit of a... I'll record for a second first. Let's see if I can make it really still. There we go. Even if I'm holding it still, it's still just jittery. That's weird, man. I've never seen anything like that before. All right, I'm gonna turn this off for a little bit, save the battery. And then uh, while we're waiting, well, first we haven't even said hi to everyone listening on the audio only version. Uh, this is probably one that you're going to want to tune into on YouTube to check it out because there are some visuals that go along with it. Plus, I also just think it's really funny and comical to try and do a live stream outside during an eclipse, but we're gonna try to do it. Again, um, I'm a bad YouTuber, so I didn't charge all the batteries enough. So we'll see which batteries can last for however long. So if this just ends abruptly, it's because something critical ran out of power. <laughs> and that's where we're at. But uh, if you are listening to this on the run, hopefully you're having a good run out there. And maybe you're running, maybe you ran during the eclipse. If you ran during the eclipse and it eclipsed while you were out there, let me know. I'd love to hear that story. Uh, and for everyone else watching this later but not live, welcome to... Uh, probably the number one running podcast to watch and listen to that's going to give you real-time live eclipse coverage. I don't think there's another running podcast out there that's going to give you better eclipse coverage. I feel like I can confidently say that. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see um, who else we got have here. Uh, All right, Michael I says everyone's only all audio at this point. Okay. Right, 78 says frozen screen, you can still hear me. All right, the internet strength seems to be coming in and out. Um, so we'll have to see. Mm. Jeremy Kayla says it was a great freeze frame though, hair flowing in the wind and a smile on his face. All right, so we'll see how this goes. Um, I might have to move this computer too because maybe the computer is gonna overheat being in the sunshine. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but you know what? I appreciate that some of, hopefully none of you guys are watching this if you're in the path of totality. But um, for those of you who are watching this with me, I appreciate you. Um, my wife's over here somewhere too. Uh, she, she's very adamant about not getting on camera today, but she's out. She'll, she'll be wandering out here in a minute too. Frank says, uh, totality is happening in a few seconds in Torreon, Mexico. Whoa, okay. All right. Uh, okay. Mm. All right. Mark is here. He says, video's back. Glad to hear it. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much. All right. And Kevin says, the internet comes and goes as the sun does. <laughs> no sun, no internet. That's how it works, right? <laughs> All right. And video says, you have a hill in the backyard? Yeah, this isn't. This part isn't my backyard here, so... I'm right, pretty much right at the property line. And then there's kind of like in this subdivision, there's kind of like, a, I guess it's a common areas, but it's just wildlife. It, they burn it every year. But then during the spring, like wildflowers and stuff grow up there. So that, that's what we're looking at here. This is where my fire pit is. That's where these chairs are. So I, I'm ready for fire pit weather. All right. We got some PRs to talk about. Um, all right, AJ says CBS is showing Toria now. Nice. Um, all right, I don't have my sounds up here though. So um, we're gonna have to just uh, imagine that we're hearing some cowbells, but Calvin had a four minute PR in the half yesterday at 139.35 in the Edge Paris. Nice work, Calvin. Um, all right, do we have any other? Mm, I thought I saw some other PRs today, but I was very busy trying to get this whole thing get set up. Um, 
All right, Martha says, um, I was a deprived child. If you never even saw a partial eclipse growing up, I, I don't think I saw any partial eclipses growing up. Maybe it's because of where I was in New Jersey. Um, uh oh, my sunglasses just blew away. Um, but yeah. Mm. Kevin Huang's got the spark notes for us. <laughs> He's got all the versions of the eclipse set up. Nice. Uh, Michael Lai says uh, his second grader and fifth grader will get to check it out outside of school today. Nice. Um, yeah. Yeah. Someone says I should have brought a uh, extension cord. I know. I just wasn't. I wasn't thinking enough about it. So that's that's on me. All right. Um, okay. Here we go. Robert Hansen Henson says got a 30 k PR on my last 20 miler of the marathon block from 328 to 248 for a 30 k. Nice work. Um, all right, let's see who else. Uh, Sri Kalyan P says, are you wearing the Eclipse, the on clouds right now? No, I'm, I'm wearing socks and, and flip flops right now or slides. I was in a rush. I was trying to get out here fast enough. Um, all right. Mon de los Reyes says, I got a five minute PR on the half marathon. Great work. And uh, Michael I says, just make the sounds like Roy Kent. Cowbell, cowbell, okay. All right, Stephen Lung got a PR at Cherry Blossom. Nice, 121, nice work, Stephen Lung. Cowbell, cowbell, cowbell. <laughs> and uh, Seema de Baltimore says, big cozy run club showing at Cherry Blossom this weekend. I heard, and I've seen a lot of photos of the hats going around, so it's the singlet, so it was good to see all of that, guys. Congratulations. I wish I could have been out there this week. But you know what? I was listening to the Believe in the Run uh, interview of Lindsey Flanagan on my run today, and I, and it is closer to Boston this year than it normally is, which I wasn't, I was like, it doesn't feel like it's always this bang, bang right away, because I felt like there wouldn't be enough time for me to go to Cherry Blossom, then come home, and then get ready for the trip. And so I just felt very rushed, so that's why I didn't go this year, but maybe next year, maybe next year. All right. Um, Dave says, how much totality are we going to get there? They say we're going to get 90% for, uh, for Crystal Lake, so we'll see what that's all about. Okay, okay. Uh, Calvin says, a big cloud covered the sun, and that'll be the closest that they get over there. Ooh, it's a bummer. And, okay. AJ says video stopped. All right, we're going to just keep going with the video, though. Um, we're going to keep trying. Uh, it does look like the video does go in and out. Uh, maybe if I move the computer closer to the house a little bit. Well, I can't move it that much closer. Uh, or else I won't be able to see what's going on. I, I have a hard time seeing what's on the screen as it is. All right. Uh, and Frank says, in New Jersey, uh, there were no visible partial eclipses out here. In New Jersey, it says there's no partial eclipse between 1970 and 2017, which is a, a weird long gap. See, that's that's why I never saw any. See, that's right. Um, all right. There we go. That explains a lot. All right. I think we've got some internet now. So I did bring up my pocket knife from downstairs. Let's try to do it outside. On, this is the first outside unboxing. Got a package from Under Armour. Um, I did double check with them before this, and this is not part of so I can't show it to you guys. Paper in here is just a packing slip, and then kind of a large box. I feel like it's too big, but what we have is Under Under Armour Velocity Elite Two. Yeah, Mark Peterson said the empty box can fly away. It's, it's trying to, for sure. But, ooh, look at this color. You know what I forgot to bring? I forgot to bring my scale out here. So we're gonna have to weigh it and add it to the uh, spreadsheet another time. But this is this is exciting. Look at, look at this shoe. Check this out. So um, we have a beaded Piba layer on top. It looks like the flow velocity uh, rubberized EVA, or is it an EVA still? For the outsole, and then a carbon fiber plate down through the center here. Oh, 
feels really lightweight. It says Under Armour Racing, which you can't see because this is not great light for doing an unboxing. But, I don't think I ran in the Velocity Elite 1. This is the Velocity Elite 2. This upper is incredibly breathable. It's amazing. It's like a, it's like a Spider-Man which I think is a good thing. I'm saying that. Uh, but I'm loving the design. Just a little bit of structure in this heel cup. A little bit of padding. Feels pretty white, lightweight. It's not the lightest shoe, but it feels light. Feels a little bit front heavy. This giant poncho Kiva looks like. Interesting. Interesting shoe. But no, no rubber on the outsole. Smells kind of just like, um, smells kind of like a basketball almost. It's like a rubber smell to it. Yeah, but the other thing is, so this material, it's almost like a ripstop that's in here. And um, when you put it up against your face, it's scratchy. So just be aware of that if you're going to put this up on your face. But yeah, I would... I would love it if uh, this was a great shoe. Looks like it's a pretty low plate position in here though. So I feel like you're getting a lot of foam between you and your foot and the ground. There's a lot of foam from our plate and the flipper of this uh, outsole, midsole material. Interesting. <laughs> Michael I says, uh, the shoe smells like outside. It kind of does. That's the predominant smell that I'm getting is the backyard. Um, but yeah, hopefully this is going to fly away. All right. Kevin Hawk says, uh, it looks to be a good year for super shoes, but 2025 is apparently going to be crazier. Expect most race shoes to be below 6.5 ounces next year, according to a running warehouse. Interesting. You know what's crazy is that um, one time I went to Connor's house and he has like a basket of shoes. Like he doesn't keep them in like a wall. I mean, maybe it's changed now because it's been a while. But he has, he has like a basket, like a tub of shoes. And all of them are like three versions. Like I picked one up and I'm like, what's this? And he's like, it's four version six, I think. And we were on, we had just gotten more version four at that point. And I was like, what the heck? I was like, I can't look at any of these. I'm gonna to get too confused. I'm gonna forget what's now and what's later, and it's just gonna to be too hard. But I don't know how I don't know how he keeps it all straight. He just he gets shoes like years ahead of time. <laughs> Devin Patterson says, I feel like since they're outside already, you should pop them on and do a bit of running up and down the hill fine. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. There's no there's no rubber on the outsole. You think they would do okay on this hill? And Martha says, uh, Runner's World Today has an article that says uh, why we think the VA will lower the standard again. I think that's right. I think they are going to lower the standard again. I think the standard is going to move substantially more for women than it will for men. Uh, and I think that's going to be the trend with standard changes for the Boston Marathon for a long time. And uh, people are going to be mad about it, rightfully so. People are going to be disappointed. But, you know, that's how, that's how that has always gone, I guess. <laughs> says, I agree <laughs> with Davin Patterson. Let's see some live hill repeats. I already did my run for today. I'm not going to do any hill repeats today, guys. <laughs> you guys are so funny. <laughs> uh... <laughs> And Ed Chan says, you know, it's kind of weird that you've never done a running live stream. And now that I think about it, like live streaming while running. Uh, yeah, you know what? I feel like there is the opportunity for that. Um, I mean, I've done it while walking home from a run before, like in the early when it was like Instagram lives. I did that. And then um, I've never done one while running. And I feel like Ginger Runner, when he hit 100,000 subscribers on YouTube, 
he ran a 100K live streaming the whole thing. And I feel like after that, it's pretty much done. There, there's, there's nothing left to do in live streaming, running live streaming at that point. Um, it's a, quite a technological feat. I don't know how he did it. And Mark says, great. They changed the uh, qualification times. It's just in time for me to get a five minute bump for turning 35. Oh boy. I tr uh, yeah, this, this year I'll, I'll go to the next age group. So next year I'll be in the next age group. Interesting. I'll be in the 45 year old age group next year. And Calvin says, I think 315 to 320 will be the new women's standard and men will be 255 at least, I think. You think that for like 30 and under, it's gonna be 255? That's fast. That's very fast. Um, are there too many men in the 30 and under age group? In my age group, 40 to 44, it's 310. I feel like it can't get much, it shouldn't get much faster than that. Are they always by five minute increments? Because if you have to be 305 to BQ for 40 to 44, that's crazy fast. I was thinking today about um, the speedy runners qualification for, bo for, for Berlin. And for 40 to 49, you have to run a 248 if you want to get in through the speedy runner program. That's just, I think that's unattainable for me. Terrence, who he says, Boston should get rid of BQ times and just have an acceptance time. Uh, yeah, I know, but then it's, um, what if they have too many people? That's the problem. They have to control the number of people. Mark Peters says, Code doing Hillary Pete's in the background with the running equivalent to Uncle Rico recording his football video. You guys just really love Hillary Pete's. I'm not going to do Hillary Pete's. Reich78 says, live stream during London? Probably not. I'm going to try to run that one fast. So um, today, after the eclipse, I'll be filming uh, the last check-in with coaches Sage and Sandy before London. So we're going to work on a race plan and... Um, yeah, do some predictions, talk about how I've been messing up all the workouts, you know, stuff like that. Eric says the BAA is not Vapitone friendly. And Run Tommy says my 45 to 49 year old age group is like 320. That seems too slow. I could see that going up to 315. Um, but going from like 310, going on, going to 305 for 40 to 44 seems like a lot. Back close to 305 and then 45 to 49 is 315. I don't know what's going on, guys, but there's like sirens going off like crazy right now. All right, should we check in on this sun again? Let's see how we're doing. Sun has moved again on me. Oh boy, it moved a lot. All right, guys, are you guys ready? Here's where we're at. Look at that. Why is there like notches on the moon? Do you guys see that? Something weird, something fishy. Here, but look at that. What is going on there? Look at that. Wow. That looks weird. I don't know why that looks that way. Does anyone know? Hmm.
Oh, Kevin Hunt thinks it's probably just a problem with the lens. That makes sense. Bob, he says, the moon is fake. <laughs> JC says, it's pull tabs. I'm glad you're seeing it too, and not just me. No, it's not just me. <laughs> yeah, Richard Wilson says, the notches are probably on your end. Do you want to come and look at it over here? Hey, look at this. Look at the camera over here. Yeah, you. Yeah, the cameras. This is the camera that's going on. So just to come over here. Look at this. She says she can't come over here because she's on a work call. <laughs> she's she's ducking out of a work call. She's still on the work call while looking at the solar eclipse. Video says that it looks like a ball guy with his side hair coming up. To me, it looks like a the moon is like peeking in. <laughs> Just a weird artifact on my lens, I guess. Yeah. Huh. Matthew, I was up. said the Mayan temples are aligning for a pair of the sacrificial running shoes. I've got, I've got a pair right here. Should we sacrifice these? These are the only ones I have. These are my slides. Get through my slides. Give them to the running gods. That is so weird though, isn't it? CB76 says, this is two stops of stabilization. I, I don't know. I have it on just regular stabilization. I guess I should have stabilized it before. I didn't think we would, I would need more stabilization. I wish the wind would die down. Do you think the wind will die down? I bet you some weird stuff's gonna happen when it gets like really dark here. I'm sure the wind's gonna go crazy. Let's record this for a little bit. Oh, this is weird. All right, we'll check that back in on that camera later. Whoa, Vanessa says it's so dark in, in uh, Austin right now that the nighttime lights kicked in. Oh. And Luis wants to know if we had any alien sightings yet. I haven't seen any. I feel bad for my neighbors because they're, I think my, one of my neighbors invited a bunch of his family over to watch the eclipse and they're gonna have to hear me chat on the live stream in the background. <laughs> Sean Devon says the rapture is obviously about to happen. Uh, Reich 78 says the birds in the area are going to be so confused when it gets fully dark. I don't think we're going to get fully dark in here. Um, but yeah. But there is an area around here. There is like a flock of wild turkeys out here. Not here, but in this area. I run by them frequently. Sometimes they're walking through the backyard here. Um, one, I bet you they'll be freaked out. Vanessa Martinez says they reached totality. Whoa, that's cool. Um, and Steve McKellar says, do you do anything for wind noise with the GoPro? I don't. I don't put anything on it, um, but I don't usually do a lot of um, a lo long audio or like uh, interviews with it. I use If I'm using a GoPro in a non-action setting, I'll use it as like a secondary camera for like a time lapse or something. And then I'm not relying on that for audio. Right now I'm using the DJI mic, the wireless mic system, I think version one. Um, and so that's what I'm using. I, the wind is to my back, so hopefully you guys aren't getting too much wind. But yeah, so normally if I have it during a race, um, I'm usually kind of like talking loud enough that way, if, and if I apply heavy um, like noise reduction or wind rejection noise, uh, wind rejection filter to it, um, you can still hear my voice pretty good. So that's kind of the solution. And Wojek Malkowicz says, finally made it to the live stream. Hey Mike, are you going to the, are you going to the still moving premiere next Saturday? So uh, Eric Floberg's movie about Joe Greer, uh, it premiered in Tennessee in Joe Greer's hometown, I think last week, two weeks ago. 
And the Chicago showing will be this weekend. Unfortunately, I will be in uh, Boston. Um, or I don't think it's this Saturday, is it? It's the following Saturday? Yeah, I think because I'm going from Boston to London. Either way, I know Eric messaged me about it, um, but I'm not going to be in around here for it, unfortunately. So, um, and Seema de Baltimore says uh, PBS has cool live stream going on too, streaming from total uh, from totality locations. I think that's pretty cool. Nice. And runner Will says I got a good shot from using the diffused roof of my car. Awesome. Uh, all right. Boy, let's pick it up. I'm worried that I'm going to lose the camera here um, from all the wind. I think we're doing okay. Uh, and CV76 says, I think you could see the eclipse under the tree shadows. Really? Huh. That would be an interesting way to do it. And Sega Dreamcast says, I'm stuck editing at my desk. You should just, are, how much are you guys going to see over in, on the East Coast over there, though? Mm. Are any of you guys getting the eclipse, too? Matt Legrand is here. Matt, I, I don't think that you guys are getting much of the eclipse over there on the West Coast. My, my wife is on, she was going to reschedule a call that she has with the West Coast today. She had it scheduled for one. I was like, you, you're, gonna, you're not gonna let people look at the eclipse? Um, Cause she's the boss and she decides some, a lot of these calls. And she's like, uh, I think they're getting like less than 50% coverage over there. So no one, no one cares. It's like, oh, okay. Um, all right. And Martha says, Ko, you'll start noticing the weird light that one never sees at any other time when the eclipse reaches about 60%. Okay. We still got about, I think, 20 minutes till we get to like maximum coverage here. You know? <laughs> Calvin says, Ko's wife, here's the thing, <laughs> who cares? <laughs> she, she would have moved the call if, if more of her team um, wanted to go see it. She asked me, should I move it? I was like, I was like yeah, you should move it. She's like, oh, I asked them and no one wants to move it. Uh, that guy Weir says, in Buffalo it's totality, but it's cloudy. I'm hoping to see it peek through the high clouds. Interesting. And uh, Matt Hember says, Hey, Co, sorry if this has asked already, but are you planning a London shakeout? Yes, 11 o'clock at SOAR. I believe it's at 11. Saturday, 11 o'clock at SOAR. I don't know if they have a storefront or just an office or what. I, I don't know the, if, you, if you're on the SOAR newsletter, they sent out something about it today. Um, and I'll post stuff. Uh, uh, I don't know when I'm supposed to post stuff about it, but soon. I'm posting final details. I think what we're, oh, someone's supposed to set up an RSVP link. And I think that's what we're waiting on. But yeah. Thomas One says, my wife and I are stopping everything at 3 p.m. Eastern time here outside of Columbus to witness the totality. I think that's a good idea. Mika says, there's no eclipse in Finland, but major floods due to melting ice. Went for a 10K easy run and had to run 13 kilometers as the route was cut off at three different bridges. Whoa. Sean Devon says, uh, NASA has a live stream. I would hope so. Mm. <laughs> Mark Peterson says, something tells me there won't be any store giveaways at the shakeout. It's too expensive. That would be. It would be like the most expensive uh, no, I think the most expensive shakeout is probably the pizza party shakeout because we're renting it, we're renting out like almost the entire little Malnati's. That's a pretty that's a pretty pricey one, and and we give out shirts at that one too. So that's a pretty pricey one. Um, I don't think there'll I think there'll be no. There's another event though I just read about in the SOAR newsletter today. That's like a um, kind of an unsanctioned pop up race that's going to be happening, and after that meeting at a bar I don't think I'll be going I don't know if I'll be going to the bar part of that one 
but there might be beverages at that. All right, Cosmic Pino. Well, Michael says we're getting 93% coverage in Boston in 45 minutes. That's nice. And uh, Matt Hember says, nice, I'll see you there at the store. All right, Matt. Looking forward to meeting. All right, Cone Weber says, off topic, yesterday I ran my first half marathon at 137.16. Nice work. Thanks to you, Co. I got myself my Endorphin Pro 3, and it worked perfect. Awesome. That's a great shoe to race in. Congratulations on that PR. Nice work. All right. Um, all right. And Terry says, the sore email is out. It just dropped into my inbox. Nice. All right. Sean Devlin says, they just hit totality and one of the broadcasters started crying. Let's see what we got here. Let's check in on this camera again. Hold on. All right, you guys ready? Here we go. I got a little bit more reach on that lens. I don't know what effect is ca causing those little tabbies at the bottom of the... Is that weird? That's pretty crazy. At some point, I'll try to look up at it with my special sunglasses, but not yet. I don't think we're quite there yet, but it's nicer when the wind calms down. Look at that. That's just weird. I wonder if I can get more darkness out of this. Nope. Oh. This is crazy. All right. All right, we'll check in again later. Wow, Julian Abibi says Disney Plus is doing a live stream. Has Disney Plus ever done a live stream? That's a wow. lot. All Kevin Hong says this is a modern day double rainbow moment. It really is. It really is. This is. It's it's something else. And John Dolan says, I must be a sociopath. I just don't get it. <laughs> I mean, you know, I was talking about it the other day and with you guys. And everyone's like, oh, like seeing 95% isn't like seeing 100%. And who was I listening to that was saying, what was I listening to? Someone was saying like 95% coverage is like uh, listening to like preschoolers doing a recital with kazoos. It's fun, you know, it's music, it's entertaining, it's cute. Um, but then like 100% uh, is like seeing Taylor Swift perform in concert, or something like that. So I guess there's a big difference. I'm not gonna be able to know that today. And Lala Peace is 20 years until the next total eclipse in the United States. And Martha says there's animals at the Dallas Zoo reacting to the totality on CNN. Wow. Eric says, yep, I'll say it again. I'm more excited about the double brewed cicada event, cicada event coming this year than this. I think that the double brood is going to happen also here. I think we're getting it in the Midwest. I think that's where, I think the range is pretty wide on it, but we're definitely getting it here. I'm worried I'm gonna the camera here. All right. I don't know how we're doing on that. Oh, 
Oh, and Calvin thinks that those those little tabby things that are happening when we look at the eclipse are the aperture blades from my lens. Oh. I'm not sure how that works, but that's a reasonable explanation. <laughs> and Lisa Sarah says Pac-Man is eating the first shell. I like that. I like that. Mm. And Thomas one says, nice cousin co. What filter is that? It's a variable ND filter. The, you just twist it. I bought it years ago because I thought I might start trying to vlog on these bigger Sonys. And then I realized it's just too jittery to vlog on those. And also, I'm not good at constantly adjusting exposures and stuff. But I did try, so I gave it up like a couple of years ago. So I've had this, these filters just sitting around. And then uh, for this last Jamaica trip, I decided I would try it again. And so um, I didn't bring the ND filters, but I decided to try and at least do a little bit of vlogging from the bigger camera. And I thought it worked out okay. All right, I think we got about 10 more minutes until um, the big show. Tavin Patterson says, <laughs> In Seattle, we had 100% cloud coverage hours ago and still going strong. I love it. Terrence, who he says, if this is the end because you're on cloud, just know that the Hyperion Elite version 1 was the biggest scam in the history of running shoes. <laughs> That's what you're going to say with your last dying breath. <laughs> uh, it, it's true. It's, it had a 25 mile, mile lifespan for a marathon shoe. <laughs> uh, David Hamar says, Cole, will you be donating your special sunglasses to the Smithsonian? Probably not. JC says the totality is done. Didn't last long, but very cool. We're not supposed to get it until after the top of the hour for us over here. Cosmic Final Michael, great question. I wonder if 95% totality is like getting only 25% PIBA in your mid cell phone. <laughs> it depends on how you're going to use it. If you're going to use it to um, for daily living, then, you know, fine. But for peak performance, it's not the same. It's not the same. <laughs> Calvin says 95%. You guys are amazing. Calvin says 95% totality is like when Nike bragged about an eco shoe that was 10% recycled. <laughs> uh. Jason Horner says, I'm watching a bunch of people getting married during the totality of the eclipse. Ooh, does that mean you only have to like celebrate your anniversary like once every 20 years? Mm. JC said when they hit totality, everything got really quiet. Birds quit chirping. Very few cars going by. People abided. I like that. People abided. Sean Devlin says, I wonder if cities in the path of totality are experiencing three minute crime sprees. I don't know. It is getting darker though. I feel like it's, uh, yeah. Carrie Smith says, cue the 95% jokes. I like them. Keep them coming. I like it. Sean Devlin says, it's a three minute purge. <laughs> this is 95% totality is like calling the little trust in the Adidas Boston nines uh, a plate. <laughs> This is take off your sunglasses for a minute to check out the light. It is weird. It's like, uh, it's kind of like the, the lighting on a movie set a little bit. It's strange. Calvin says, Eclipse or not, Garmin still says you're unproductive today. It's getting colder too. I'm getting chilly out here. All right. Let's uh, reset this camera up. See if we can see it. Oh. 
hard time focusing now. All right, let's see. So I think what's happening with those tabs is that like there is like a, I don't know if it's the ND filter that's doing it, but there's kind of like a, when I was zooming in and out, there's like a second outer ring that maybe is getting obscured by the too much light from the sun behind it. Well, the dogs are barking. Dogs are going crazy right now in the neighborhood. Everyone, everyone in this neighborhood has a dog. And they're all barking. Look at that. Oh boy. I think that slight shake you're getting is my pulse. Because I'm trying to hold this camera still. Shaking. Yeah, there we go. Wow. JC says 95%, it's only 4.89 miles of a marathon. <laughs> and Molly says, uh, in Holton, Maine, a few hours from me, it's apparently in the path of totality and they're expecting 40,000 people. And for context, a little over 6,000 people live there. That's a lot of people. Boy. That's pretty special. I think we got enough battery to make it through the, less, the rest of the broadcast for today. We can just leave this up. I need to rotate a little bit more. Can you guys see that? I wish it wasn't so windy. At least we're getting a chance to see it. with all says by the way i got my second ever bq at mount charleston marathon this past weekend congratulations oliver nice work excellent <laughs> video says 95 percent is like those psychos who stop their watch before the finish line just so the strava will be a perfect 26.2 do people do that who does that that's not right. You should not be doing that, guys. Just finish it when it's, I mean, I don't know. I guess you could do that if you wanted to. I saw someone did a 10 mile run. Oh, I think it was, was it the runner's plate? She did a 10, she did that 10 mile run in Minnesota and um, she came in at 9.98 miles. Was that her? Someone else did that. I'm not sure who it was. All right, do I need to switch? I think I need to switch to manual focus here. I'm not sure I'm getting the right focus. Oh, okay. Let's do manual focus. Is that it? Right there. Ah, oh, look at that. I don't know, I think we need to leave manual focus on. I think it's doing better before. But I did realize that um, optical steady shot was off on the lens. I turned it on, that's why it's much more stable now. So there's that. It's still windy though. And that wind is getting it, but man. Oh man, Cosmic Final with Michael says, 95% of a PR is doing a Revel downhill marathon. Ooh, shots fired there on that one. Chasey says 95% of Strava users run longer than planned just to be sure. We sure do. Mm. Luis says uh, the next solar eclipse is August 12th, 2045 in Eureka, California. Mark your calendars. Ooh. 45. It's a long way away. All right, let me adjust this camera a little bit more. Okay. It doesn't feel like it's in focus. There. 
Ooh, we're getting there. I think that's all we're going to get. I think that's as close as we're going to get. All right, give me a second. I got to go get those special sunglasses. All right, I'm going to try and look at. Oh, wow. You look super goofy when you're doing this, but it's amazing what you could see. Incredible. I feel like I could see more detail of the moon with my own eyes than I can with my lens. I just think that the exposure is just too hard for this camera to figure out. And the focus is definitely coming in and out. Ooh. Oh man, it's so, it's so lost. There. Sorry, I'm not talking very much for you audio listeners, but just trying to take it all in. CV76 says, and my sensor is toast. JC said, did the dog stop barking? They did. I do hear a bird chirping. Yeah, there's some birds chirping still. Frank says, and the feed sends out an eclipse text. Did they send out a text? <laughs> yeah, and Calvin says, I wonder if the ISS can see the path of darkness across there. I bet you they can. Considering what the Eclipse cam is showing, it's surprisingly bright on the co-cam, or is it adjusting brightness automatically? I don't know. I mean, I have the ISO set super low on this. Let's turn the auto focus back on. That's ISO 800. Isn't that crazy? I just looked up at the sun. That wasn't very smart. AJ says it's max coverage 47% in, in Lauderdale right now. Steve McCullough says the birds are chirping louder in Michigan. I still hear some birds here. A lot of them have stopped. Stevie 76 says work productivity has plummeted. I would imagine so. I would imagine so. Oh boy. This camera is so heavy every time I try to adjust it a little bit. Still moves after I'm done adjusting it. And Paul Pollock says, is, is the co-cam brightening things? It looks like a normal day. Uh, this, this camera is bright. Oh, this camera you mean. Let's see. Uh, I'm definite. No, I'm not. It, it thinks I'm correctly exposed. It's, I mean, it's not. It was super bright out here earlier. I wasn't sure I was going to be able to read my 
laptop before, but um, I can read it just fine now. But yeah, I mean, even though, yeah, so like, even though we're, I think we're about as covered as we're gonna get. Maybe in a couple of minutes we'll get a little bit more coverage, but that's gonna be it for today. I think this is as dark as it's gonna get here. Do you know DG says it's real dark in Toronto now? Yeah. All right, guys. I think that's gonna be a good place to leave it for today. I'm gonna to capture the rest of this, uh, watch it with my wife. But thanks for joining in for today. We'll have another video tomorrow. We'll do another live stream. We'll do uh, some trivia. So we'll play another game, same time as today, 1 p.m. Central Time. Hopefully you're enjoying the Eclipse wherever you are. And until I see you next time, be safe out there, everybody.